Tonight on Joy News Prime, police arrest four armed persons suspected to be national security operatives parading the MPP Ayaso North constituency voting centre. We have made it clear to the party officers that the Ghana Police Service is capable of conducting, providing absolute security for this election. We'll bring you updates from some constituencies across the country still on security issues. The Ashanti Region Police Command wages war on 51 motor riders and tricycle operators breaking the law. Because this is the first time we are conducting such an exercise, we have thought it wise to warn them so that if any of them commit such an offence again, automatically he will go to the court. And with 30 days to end the Ramadan fast, some Muslims in Kumasi are complaining about the high prices of goods for the Eid celebration. I'll definitely be handing it over to Beverly and Oreko for Prime Business and Prime Sports. Beverly, what's coming up in business? So government has made a move to check public entities. We'll tell you how and why this will be different. When we list companies, rank them in performance, it is also to bring discussion from the public to them. And in sports? Well, head coach of the Black Maidens, Babanu, who is confident his side would make it to the fourth round of the qualifiers for the Women's FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Our aim is to qualify and move to the next stage. If we are even getting a half goal, that will propel us to the next stage. It's welcome. If we are getting 100 goals, that will send us to the next stage. It's welcome. But our aim it's not to play ultimately to get more goals, but to qualify. Whatever form that we are going to play to qualify to the next stage, I think that is what we have been working for. Every player, even at the top level, sometimes players can get those kind of begging chances and they will not be able to convert them. My name is Blessed Sogan. This is your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Please stay. In the Shanti region, the Regional Police Command has arrested 51 motor riders. Authorities say the culprits failed to obey traffic regulations and breached the law. Letters of warnings have been sent to, uh, uh, to serve as a deterrent to them and others as well. There's more in the report by Mona Lisa Frimpo. The Ashanti Regional Police Command has for weeks now seized unregistered motorbikes and tricycles in the region. 51 riders have so far been arrested. Police say the breach of traffic regulations is the cause of the many fatal accidents recorded in the region. DCOP Kwesi Akumia Apraku is Deputy Regional Police Commander. Majority of the accidents that do happen are mammoth. We have realized that people do not observe the traffic lights when they reach the lights, especially the motor riders. That's why we started this type of operation. Though the culprits have been released, letters have been issued to them seven as warning. But because this is the first time we are conducting such an exercise, we have thought it wise to warn them. That's why we are going to give them warning letters so that if any of them commit such an offense again, automatically he will go to the court. DCOP Akomia Apraku warns of more arrests. He cautions drivers to be extra vigilant as the police have been deployed to check drivers who fail to obey traffic rules. We are started. It's not going to be a nine day wonder. We are going to sustain it to stop that practice from the region. So, and by this warning everybody, not the motorbikes. If you are on the road using a car, tricycle or anything, you have to observe the traffic light. If it says stop, you stop. If it says go, you go. Nobody is uh, to violate the light. If you do so and you are caught, we will put you at the right place. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. And back here in the Greater Accra Region, four national security operatives arrested for parading at the NPPIR, so North Constituency Voting Centre, have been put before 
the court and remanded into police custody. The suspects are to reappear with other accused persons on the 10th of May 2022. Regional Police Commander DCOP Idilansa Seydou says the police service has the capacity to provide security for the constituency elections. If you are a security organization and you find yourself here, you are an unwanted person. Talk about the national security, sir. We have, the, the, we have made it clear to the party officers that the Ghana Police Service is capable of conducting, providing absolute security for this election. So we don't want to entertain any other form of security at the polling stations. I see. So the men, how many men did you arrest today, those pals from national security? Four, four guys were picked up. Today? Yes, this morning. And then yesterday too, I know that about two guys were picked up at Earlier the on, police. yes. Um, do we know the status of investigation of those two persons? We are taking care of them at the appropriate level. So they are still in your custody? Yes, please. So going forward, we have tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday, persons who are from national security wanting to perhaps be at the voting grounds. What will be your words to them, sir? If you are a delegate and you are with a national security or whatever set up, come in the form of a civilian and vote and go away. If you come like us standing here, we'll take care of you. Because this election is the Ghana Police Service who has been mandated to provide absolute security for the elections. And we're not going to entertain counter security on the ground. Because yesterday it was in the news. I mean, I captured a man in that uniform uh, taking part of the voting process. So nobody should do that going forward. Absolutely. If you are a delegate, Come in the form of a, a mufti and do what you are supposed to do. Nobody will unmask you. But if you want to wear a, you hide under any uniform and come in, either to intimidate or obstruct, we'll take care of you. Also, let's check uh, out what's happening on the ground. Uh, my colleague, uh, Kwesi Paka Wilson, has been monitoring events, uh, joins me live from the uh, Yawasu North constituency. Paka, what can you report from where you are? So, blessed. Currently, I'm at the mother and child community day school where the governing NPP is organizing the uh, Ayawaso North Constituency Executive Elections. And as I speak to you, voting has ended, counting has ended. Quite a number of delegates have been celebrating their respective candidates who have won the elections. And I must say that if you see the background, you realize that at a total darkness, there are no provision of light. The policemen who had gathered here uh, this evening had to use the uh, headlight uh, to serve as a form of light in assisting the electoral commission count the ballot papers and equally declare uh, the result for the various candidates. I have with me uh, this young man. Uh, he is a new entrant. Uh, he contested with the incumbent chairman for the Iowa so not constituency and he has been declared victor of uh, this evening's election and as you can see he's all over dripped in powder and water as well and I can see some tears um, running through his eyes. He, popularly right so so it's it's Tim Kelly Oh. Yeah. 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 So let's go and speak to the man himself, sir. Thank you very much for your time this evening. You have won this election, and why the tears, sir? Huh. Actually, um, we have to give thanks to the Lord. This is an internal election, and um, I shouldn't be sharing tears, but. Looking at the general election and looking at the internal election, I think the internal election is more harsh than the general election. You could see the insults, um, the name shaming and all those things. But finally, the youth has spoken, the delegate has spoken, and I also not chose Kelly. I thank each and every one of them. And you, you, you are shocked by how people treated you, delegate treated you when you were going through this election? I believe going through elections, you have a lot of challenges. Mine was very exceptional. People used a all, lot of staff against me. But I think when the day got there, the delegate decided. And I was For me, this is an orphan constituency. As a chairman, one of the key responsibilities to ensure that this constituency gets a legitimate member of parliament to represent the party. As you have won, I want to ask from you, what are you going to do to ensure that that, that dream is realized? Actually, I won't say for myself, you could see the youth behind me. 
assuming we had this youth, previous election, I think we could have won this election. Me being the youth and the youth favorite, I think I will lure them back into the MPP. This seat, we can win it. This is not an F1 consensus again. Hopefully, by the help of God, we are going to win this seat once in my administration. We thank God. MPP will take this seat. Thank you very much. So these are the words of uh, Kikeli himself, who has won the election, and he's confident that um, come 2024, he is going to win the Iowa Senate constituency seat for the governing MPP. And Jojo, let me say that earlier in the day, the Ghana Police Service were equally present here. In fact, they have been here since morning, quite a number of them. But the regional police command himself, um, that is DCOP, Idi Seido, or came around to also uh, assess the situation on the ground. Now, upon his arrival, uh, it was established that about four persons who were posing as national security uh, operatives have been arrested. And there was a warning from the regional command that the Ghana Police Service has the capacity to handle or provide security for this constituency elections across the greater Accra region. And so any person who is posing as a national security operative or perhaps from any sister agency should back off, give the police the sole responsibility to provide security going forward. So this has been the situation here at the Iowa so North constituency. Largely, the election has been peaceful, it's been smooth, and the delegates have complied with the laid-down procedures, and the EC has equally given them the, the education that they have to go through. So if you come to Iowa so West, uh, Iowa so North constituency, the, uh, the election has ended, and everything is peaceful. Wow. Parker, I'm grateful that you've been able to give us some updates uh, there. We'll still keep our eyes uh, on the grounds, monitoring uh, all the events for you here on the Joy News Channel. But the Ghana Police Service has given some updates as well. Uh, the Police Service is warning that uh, the NPP constituency uh, executives must behave appropriately during the exercise. And you have the update on your screens right now. Uh, it reads updates on arrest of uh, at Okaikwe South constituency. Today, 29th of April, 2022, the accused persons, John Esel Ba and Inokwami uh, Bosumpim, were arraigned and have been remanded to reappear on the 10th of May, 2022. Now, a third suspect, Ebenezer Pencil, who was later arrested was also put before court and has been remanded to reappear with the other accused persons on the 10th of May 2022. The police service remains committed to delivering on our mandate of maintaining law and order in the country, and we urge the public to continue to support us. So that's the indication we're getting from the Ghana Police Service there. Well, the service is also warning NPP constituency executives against deviant behaviors. The director of operations at the police service, DCOP Mohamed Shraj, who is in charge of the Ablikma North constituency, warned that any party member who fails to comply with the rules will face the law. Speaking to Joy News, he indicated that the police has revised its security arrangements to ensure law and order during the conduct of the constituency polls. As you rightly said, when you plan, you always go back to revise your operation to suit the demands. We have information that this constituency has a record of, you know, violence in the past. Or it's a hospital. So we decided to begin to plan accordingly by taking security measures proactively. As you can see, We've deployed to secure the venue where the election will take place. Right. And even before coming at the junction, we saw our motorbikes also deployed. And then the combat teams from the Accra region and then the National Operation Department working together to ensure that there's also orderly parking of cars, there's good access, and also working with the chairman of the committee here. And the two municipal chief executives are also here. The, the, the electoral officers are also here. And the MPs, we are now inviting the coordinators. Okay. So what we want to do is engagement. Mm. We want all stakeholders to have a meeting with us. Security is a collective and shared responsibility. Meanwhile, Abligma North MP Sheila Batel says the constituency has solved issues of removal of names from the register. She believes 
the move will actually douse any agitation. So that that has been resolved or is being addressed. That one is being addressed. It's being addressed. So there wouldn't be any because issue. Because there were one or two issues that came up after the album had been presented. Okay. But knowing that these are people who are supposed to be in there, but for one reason or the other, are missing, we have already discussed it with the elections committee. We have agreed to ensure that those people are not so that it will be resolved with time. Well, in the Ashanti region, eight of nine NPP executives in the Subin constituency have maintained their seats. This follows a chaotic start to the polls. Some aspirants who attempted to block the election accused the party's leadership of breaching internal processes to hold a delegates conference. Nanaya Ojima filed this report from Kumasi. 897 delegates were expected to participate in the election of executives in the Subin constituency. Edusei Puku was re-elected as chairman with others retaining their positions. I'm the chairman and I have not received any injunction, so I don't want to talk about court issues. All the contestants were here. When we were counting, the agents were there. They all signed. Eight of nine incumbent executives who sought re-election won. There was chaos at the beginning of the election when some aspirants for executive positions made attempts to stop the election. They accused the party's leadership of breaching internal processes to hold delegate conference. Aspiring chairman Mark Che said the date for the re-election was set in less than 24 hours, denying them access to voters register. Yesterday, there was a meeting. They called a meeting, emergency meeting. The emergency was, we have to uh, hold elections tomorrow. Not giving a chance to speak to one delegate. No, I don't have the album. And I don't even have a polling agent, all right, to write my results for me. Okay, so how do I go on? Is that the way in the, uh, elections are conducted? Already, some aggrieved persons who were not satisfied with the polling station election secured an injunction on the constituency polls. There's an injunction against this election exercise today. Okay, how do we go? Knowing very well that there is a law of the land, the law of the land is telling us not to go on with the election. There was heavy police deployment on the ground, while some heavily built men also paraded the polling center. For the youth organizer position, Yao Gerardo's name was missing from the ballot paper. Reason for the missing details of the candidate remains unknown. Elections in the Subin constituency over the years have been marred with infractions, with some aggrieved members closing down party office after the polling station elections. After the parliamentary primaries in 2020, some members whose names were missing from the voter register resorted to the courts. Meanwhile, the member of parliament, Eugene Boache Entry, maintains the process was fair. We had 900 delegates. Breaking it down, we have 170 polling stations and five, that's 850, plus 22 coordinators, 70 constituency executives, myself included as the MP, five patrons and five council of elders. We gathered here this morning, around about 8 a.m. And the electoral commission came to conduct, I believe, one of the most peaceful and democratic, free and fair uh, elections today. We've all seen it, that the best of Subin has been put on display today. Clearly, the elected executives will have to do a lot to unite the rank and file of the party in the Subin constituency. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima reporting. A newly elected NPP chairperson for Mensha South constituency, Richard J. Menza, says there will be resistance to the imposition of what he terms is the unwarranted directives from regional executives. According to him, no party member will be allowed to sabotage the Member of Parliament, Dr. Matthew Okupoku Prempe. Nanaya Ojima has the rest of the story. 
The Mensha South constituency election was peacefully conducted. The elected executives say they are poised to ensure ruling NPP retains power in the 2024 election. Newly elected constituency chairman Richard A.J. Mensah says punitive measures will be put in place to instill discipline. He says saboteurs against the member of parliament will not succeed. Dr. Everyone is aware that Dr. Machi Opoku Prempe, our MP, has performed very well. We all know he's one of the best ministers. We share the same dreams. Whoever plants evil against him will face our wrath. Some regional executives witnessed the conduct of the polls. Richard A.J. Mensah said any oppressive directives from regional executives of the party will be resisted. <laughs> There are some things that I wasn't happy with when I was just a member. Some people from the region take decisions that affect constituencies negatively. This will not happen under my leadership. I will make sure the laws work. I will resist any attempts to impose certain decisions on us. The newly elected constituency executives pledged to work in unity. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima Kumasi. Well, she's 65 years old and has a physical disability, but that would not stop the uh, wholeheartedly uh, decision to support the party. Hajiya Mariama Adama, a uh, member of the NPP Council of uh, Patrons at the Ayasu North constituency, was struggling to move freely uh, from one polling booth to the other to cast her ballot. According to her, the gathering of the NPP members excited her emotions, her reason, um, and a reason for which she indicated that she would not be left out for, from participating in the elections. There's more in this report. Hajia Mariama Adama is 65 years old and a member of the Iowa Synod Council of Patrons for the governing NPP. Hajia Mariama, as she is affectionately called, served as a constituency organizer for eight years and was the first vice chairperson of Iowa Synod. Her inability to walk did not prevent her from participating in the constituency elections at the Mother and Child Community School at Mamobi. As delegates were failing to cast their ballots, Hadia, who has been operated upon twice after a fatal accident, was seen in a wheelchair completing the voting process. With visible pains playing out on her face, she slowly made her way from one polling boat to the other. She never gave up as she subdued her pains and smoothly went through the voting process. The Electoral Commission had made arrangements for proxy votes but Hajia insisted to be physically present at the voting grounds. Well, it is my obligation to do uh, that. It is my uh, right to come and cast my vote, uh, even though I'm not feeling fine. Once I'm still alive, I have to serve my party. That is why I have come. I want to say things for my own self. When I come on occasions like this, I become so much happy in my heart. When I see MPP members come together to do something like this nature, I am more than a happy person. That's why I came myself. So you love the party? Too much. Speaking to Joy News, she expressed concerns over the incessant calls on government to address challenges faced by the ordinary Ghanaian and called on the electorate to appreciate the global challenges, which has had a negative impact on the Ghanaian economy. She is, however, confident government would solve the challenges before the 2020 polls. I am so much 
disturb about the way people are talking. I think what is happening to Ghana is not Ghana alone. It is the whole world. I am a Ghanaian. I also go to the market. I pay electricity, I pay water. But I believe that within the three years, it's going to be okay for Ghana. The former constituency women's organizer, who is rooting for a Dr. Balmya presidency, asks Allah to bless the NPP with victory in 2024. I am praying that we have victory. We are the victorious. And I am fully going for Baumia. Yes, I am fully, fully going for Baumia. And I know with Baumia, we are going to break the eight. Because this is the time for Dombo also to come alive. Hajia Mariama Adama, just like many others, is confident the governing NPP will break the eight. For Joy News, I am Kwesi Parker Wilson, Mamubi. Now, Professor of Communications Studies, Audrey Igajepo, has condemned the lack of action by the police and other state security actors in taking action on the abuse of journalists Let in Ghana. More after this break. To stay in the country's record of free speech. Media Foundation has documented several <laughs> And you welcome back to the show, Professor of Communications Studies, Audrey Gajekpo, has com uh, condemned the lack of action by the police and other state security actors on the abuse of journalists in Ghana. Speaking at her inaugural lecture uh, at the University of Ghana, uh, Audrey Gajekpo cited attacks on Joy News' Latif Idris and uh, the murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Suale as cases that must not be pushed onto the back burner. She also criticized excessive government's failure to enact a comprehensive broadcasting and uh, bill and also the inability of the National Media Commission to sanitize the media space. There's more in the following report by my colleague, Kuku Asante. Professor Odrigajepo says the lack of action by the police in dealing with attacks on journalists such as Joy News' Latif Idrisu, the murder of Ahmed Swali and a host of others, continue to stain the country's record on free speech. Media Foundation has documented several violations against the media by state and non-state actors. Examples of violations include instances where police or soldiers have detained, assaulted or threatened journalists or media crew while they were covering stories. The brutal police assault on Joy FM's Latif Idrusu is a case in point. Equally indicting is the still unresolved murder in 2019 of Ahmed Hussein Swale. According to her, the absence of a comprehensive broadcasting law and the lack of transparency in allocations of frequencies have led to the capture of the media space by unseen political hands. The failure of successive governments to enact a broadcast code compounded by a lack of transparency in how frequencies are allocated by the NCA, has contributed to the political capture of Ghanaian media and skewed authorization in favor of commercial state applicants to the detriment of other tiers of broadcasting, particularly the community radio sector. Professor Audrey Gajepo is considered a trailblazer when it comes to the promotion of media freedom and accountability in Ghana. For close to three decades, she has shaped students and led groundbreaking activism within the media space and beyond. On the occasion of inauguration as a full professor of communication and media studies, her proud mother sat with hundreds of people who had come from all around the country to celebrate the communication cycle. I can't describe it. I feel, I feel so proud. You know, she worked so hard. When this thing was coming, about two months ago, she started writing. I said, Audrey, won't you eat? I've taken coffee since childhood. She's been a very smart baby. She worked at 10 months. And uh, she, she's been very smart. So I'm not surprised that she rose up to this. Among the many audiences who listened keenly to her, 
was former Foreign Affairs Minister and UN Special Rep to West Africa, Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambas, who reiterated the importance of academia. But clearly, this was a very erudite presentation, a very well-researched uh, presentation, very professorial, and so um, uh, we all live here uh, enlightened about the media scene in Ghana, uh, but uh, especially also about the importance of academia uh, not staying in ivory tower. For many others, a focus on the lack of representation of women in the media is a real pointer to the lack of equality in this space. Just recently I was talking to a friend who also has a, a, a talk show and she actually um, did a survey of her own show and she found that 82% throughout the year were men on her panelists. So that's a woman's show and yet she still found the same percentage, the same statistic as Professor Gatiko. So that's very interesting. The bit about the women, women being sidelined in media, it would be good if we get more of a voice. So it was good she touched on it and I hope it will go further. Professor Gadjepo is now a full professor and says she will continue to shape and impact lives as contributing a quota to the communication and media space. Road Safety Authority says it is consulting with the appropriate stakeholders, including district, municipal and metropolitan assemblies, on how to complement its efforts. Acting Director General of the Authority Engineer David Osavoa Dante says all stakeholders must work together to assist reduce road crashes and fatalities. His call comes in the wake of an attack on road safety officers in the Ashanti region. Ohim Interior has the rest of the story. On Easter Monday, an NRSA team participating in an outreach program received a shock of their lives when two officials from the Bosom District Assembly assaulted and obstructed their activity. The men were enraged. Well, so we'll bring you updates in our subsequent bulletins. But they came, they saw, and they conquered. That's how Shamar Senior High School became champions of the APSA Science and Math Squeeze Western Zone. Shamar Senior High School earlier denied hosts and one-time winners of the National Science and Math Squeeze Ghana Senior Technical School an opportunity on the national stage after beating them during the regional qualifiers. My colleague Maxwell Agbaba uh, was there in our reports. This. We are expecting this, and God has been miraculous to us, and we say glory be to God. Okay. We are most grateful. That is what we say to God. Uh -huh. We are most grateful. That is all. Okay. Give back to me. See, relax. I'm agreeing. Shas, the icons. Relax. Okay. And expect more from us. What should we expect in a national competition? Can we just expect the best. Nothing yes. More. Yes. Nothing but the best. My name is Isaac Kwame Namensa, yes. properly known as Balu. I came to I promise to my house. The house, the name of the house is Asimeku. I told them, I told them that this year.
Nigeria, our yeah. badge. We will meet the National Science Mask. We did it. We did it again. We did it again. We did it again. What should we expect in a national competition? Tell those there. They can't go schools. We are coming. We are coming. Hi. Contestants, tell me. <laughs> Actually, like, um, it, it's all good. Like, Okay. Everything we did, we just we just thought we were doing our best. But it turns out, God actually had better plans. Like, okay. so we so are just good. Yeah. Okay. It was just good. The best. Expect the very best. Okay. The very Some of the we are coming like fire. Yeah. Coming like fire. Yeah. Coming like fire. Before we started the zonal championship, we told the other schools in Western Region to prepare for Shama because sure. we were coming sure. and we delivered. Sure. Now we are making another promise. Yes. Thank you. All the other schools prepare. Thank because you. we are coming sure. for the national championship yeah. and we are not stopping till so yeah. we get it. That's all we The APSA um, Western Zonal Championship um, just ended. We have a champion and that champion, Shama Senior High School, they are the winners for the um, Western Zone APSA Championship. Well, we're lucky to have with us here um, Samuel Ajo, he's a coordinator um, for the National Science and Maths School. We're here to find out from him what it was like, the qualification contest and then the APSA um, zonal championship here in the Western region. You're welcome to join. Thank you. Great, 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 great. great. Um, you've seen the contest, Shama Senior High School, they are winners um, for the APSA Western Zone um, Championship. Are you surprised? Well, I would say I am surprised in the sense that um, coming to this um, competition um, for 2022, um, having known them for over the years, um, we we're expecting them to, to live up this kind of, um, lift, up, lift, up, uh, lift up their game in this manner. In actual, in actual fact, um, they ex they did extremely, they did extremely well. I mean, judging from what they did right from the qualifiers, um, the qualifiers they met a stiff opposite in the in the form of GSTS and other schools. And naturally, we all felt that it was going to be a contest between GSTS and Shama. And of course, we believed that GSTS was going to walk away with the with the with the, with the trophy or with the qualification. But to our surprise, Shama put up a splendid performance and beating GSTS very well. I mean, I think 42 to 30, which, which, which was a resounding uh, beating that they gave to GSTS. And GSTS indeed acknowledged that, look, these guys um, have come along and they, uh, they have proved their mettle. Then judging, moving on to that, onto, uh, having qualified, then we have to move on to the Absa Bank Western Zone um, Zonal Championship. Then again, um, they continued their feat where they also met secondary college, who also won massively in their qualifying contest with 52 points. So naturally, you would expect that, um, they won, I think, 44 points or so, but naturally, you would expect that, oh, um, it won't, it's, it's not going to be easy for Shama. But then again, as, as, I, was, as I was mentioning, they, they did what we, we were expecting that they should do in terms of the kind of performance they put out during the qualifiers. And again, they were able to beat secondary college, Sashiros and Akontumba and all those. Then the bigger stage was set, where they met the former um, uh, Absa Bank Western uh, Zonal Champion, Champion Studies, um, uh, Archbishop Osa Girls. Yeah. And then again, the last year's uh, finalist at St. John's. Mm. It was going to be a very exciting and tough contest that we all were emphasizing. And indeed, it turned out to be. Because right from the wet goal to the final, it was um, a close contest, a close fight between all the three schools. And then um, Shama, Shama SHS, indeed proved that they have come to make a case for themselves in the NM School 2022 edition. Um, before we go, I'd want to say a big, big thank you to APSA Bank for being there to make this a reality because without your support, of course, we couldn't have come this far with organizing this um, uh, Zona Champion Show. We say a big kudos to APSA Bank for being our, main, our sponsor for the regional and uh, Zona Championship. Well, let's uh, take you back to the Ashanti region. The National Road Safety Authority there is uh, asking for more consultations and appropriate engagement with stakeholders, including district, municipal and metropolitan assemblies, on how to complement its efforts. Acting Director of the Authority Engineer, David Safwa Donting, says all stakeholders must work together to assist reduce road crashes and fatalities. His call comes in the wake of an attack on road safety officers in the Ashanti region. Ohim Interior has the rest of the story. On Easter Monday, an NRSA team participating in an outreach program received a shock of their lives when two officials from the Bosom District Assembly assaulted and obstructed their activity. The men were enraged 
by the team's actions and hurled insults at the team while seizing a metal barricade that was being utilized as a barrier. Following a police complaint, the NRLC condemned the incident and called for a meeting with the assembly officials. Acting Director General, Engineer Osafo Adontin says it is against the National Road Safety Act 2019 to obstruct and interfere with the operations of the authority. Our staff in the regions have started executing their official duties on the roads. In most cases, you find them as a team, branded like I, I, I am, going to enforce the standards as regards the use of the roads. They have been intimidated. They have been threatened. And in some cases, there have been a lot of interference from the public and others. This is regrettable. It's unacceptable. We are exercising our official duties granted by the new Act, Act 993 of 2019. I do not see why our men should be threatened when they are executing this, their official duties. We have had a couple of them, especially in the Ashanti region. Whilst appealing for support from industry players, engineer Adontin is courting for respect for the mandate of NRSC as enshrined in Act 993. According to him, it is only when all stakeholders collaborate that more lives and property could be saved. All the players within the space providing services through road infrastructure, design and construction and maintenance, vehicle structural integrity, those who are providing services in terms of public transport or commercial transport services, we will regulate them. We are to ensure that they comply with standards that they themselves have developed or we will help them develop. It means that the police will do their own work in terms of enforcing the road traffic regulations. But we are coming to complement that, look at an institutional standard and ensure that they comply with. For example, is the road infrastructure. We don't think that a road can be called a safe road if, you don't have, if it doesn't have line markings, road signs, walkways, pedestrian crossings like foot bridges and so on. It is our mandate to ensure that we collaborate strongly with the institution that is responsible for that. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interia reporting. You're watching Joy News Prime. Next is Showbiz. So it's time now to check out what's happening in the world of entertainment. The man IB is here. Yes, blessed. So <laughs> today I'm actually going to take you through what has been trending or the mm -hmm. top stories that trended within the week. Okay. And this is actually what we do every Friday on Joy Entertainment. Wonderful. So and, this... and it's been an eventful week. I'm oh, yeah, it's been a, an eventful a one from Sarkozy to right. uh, if you're a dog. Mm -hmm. But this is the wrap of the week as we do every single Friday on Joy Entertainment. There you are. Welcome to the weekly wrap. So a lot of things have trended over the week, but I will focus on the top three. So rapper Sakari, who was in France on the ticket of the ambassador, Her Excellency Anne Sophie Avi, addressing a section of the media said, African music chains are also ambassadors and so they need to be traveling on diplomatic passports. We, we deserve to have diplomatic passports sometimes because now you just want to move because I am on the move as an ambassador for Ghana. So I shouldn't have any hustle trying to like go spread my own country. So it's better I have an easy way to be able to move freely to be an ambassador and spread, you know, the word about Ghana. Well, this didn't go down well with a lot of people and it generated a lot of conversations. An entertainment pundit and artist manager, Mr. Logic, expressed his disappointment. See, what's the meaning of diplomatic passport? This is a document that is issued by government to, to send you on official purposes, like governmental purposes. Will Sarkozy allow himself to be regulated by government as to what he sings, what he projects, and how he dresses. Will he allow himself? Will he allow? Yeah, and certainly be like can. Yeah, when we say them into the air, we are not saying that he did not think of it, but I'm saying that, yeah, it's a statement to have me personally. 
A few other has also been trending in the week. So rapper Kusiata launched his Son of Jacob album and socialite Ifioro, who was part of the invited guest, rather got all the attention and talkability because of her outfit. I say your clothing line, what are you? Uh, what are you? Baby. <laughs> baby. Baby, wait, 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 pretty little things, different, different, different people. When pictures and videos of her outfit hit the social media platforms, it generated a lot of comments and a lot of backlash from social media and thus forced these posts from Ethiodo. And I quote, You won't go and arrest people who are doing illegal mining. The two pimples on my chest is what you are worried about. Set your priorities straight and get off my chest, jokers. Well, that wasn't all. She also posted this. If I knew this would happen, I would have worn a cover and slit. I effed up. Elsewhere in Nigeria, Nollywood actor Yuli Doji has been trending within the week for posting picture of his newly born baby. Well, so and a lot of people have been talking. Of the moment. Even in the studio, people are yeah, talking, right? Yeah. About the diplomatic passport. <laughs> and also the man of the moment. Oh, you, yeah. Yuli Doji. Yeah. Oh, you've been following the story. And I'm I, sure I, I have been. <laughs> I just don't want to share my comments on that anyway. Let's but keep I, wrapped. Thank you so You're much welcome. for giving us updates. And that's all we have for you here on Joy News Prime. My name is Blessed Sugan. Log on to myjoyonline.com. We have more updates for you there. Next is Prime Business. Please stay. Tonight on Prime Business, Public Enterprises Ministry Institute's Performance League table for state-owned enterprises will tell you how this will differentiate performing state institutions from weaker ones. And when we list companies, rank them in performance, it is also to bring discussion from the public to them. Also, economist Professor Bob Watting warns economy is yet to fully recover from COVID-19 as he highlights Russia-Ukraine war as a major threat to current gains. Yeah, uh, it's a big player when it comes to global economy. And if you look at Ukraine, I mean, they are uh, a source of raw materials, inputs mm. for mm. production of many things that we are, we are thinking about. So the direct or indirect effect Plus, ahead of May Day celebration, the Union of Industry, Commerce and Financial Workers want the government to address concerns of labour in order to get their full backing to grow the economy. What we proposing had to do with the general overhauling of our economy as far as uh, the incomes paid to workers are concerned and secondly, to also address the hardship that we fix. I am Beverly Broom. Please stay for details. Let's settle for the details now. The Minister for Public Enterprises, Joseph Kujo, has unveiled a newly constituted performance target management system to check the operations of state-owned enterprises. Known as the Public Enterprises League Table, Mr. Kujo believes this will enhance competition among the public sector institutions and differentiate the performing ones from the weaker institutions. Here's a report. 
The system, which will reward best performing entities, will give an opportunity for stakeholders and the media to monitor performances of these entities every quarter and annually. The move will help scrutinize performance of the companies as well as measure individual targets. Here is the Minister for Public Enterprises, Joseph Kujo. I'm saying when we list companies, rank them in performance, it is also to bring discussion from the public to them. It will make you be interested in what caused this company to come first, what caused this company to come last. And when there are experts out there in public, experts out there, when we highlight the news, the public discourse brings all this opinion to bear for us to they are they are for us as public. He has also been explaining the strategy in getting some firms listed on the stock exchange. Listen means is a technical term means that put them on the stock market for people to buy shares in it. No reasonable rational investor buys a company that is making losses. Uh, do you understand? Unless the person you have given the person a chance to take over the company completely. You, you understand? So, if the business, the state enterprises does for public policy, we don't need it. Let's say, Gayhawk. <laughs> I don't know for public policy function, the state need alcoholic beverages. You understand? It's purely business. And so you look at it with that eyes, that it's purely business, so be profitable and let employ people. Are you getting me? And write dividend check to me. And when it is attractive, you can list. According to the ministry, about 132 state-owned enterprises are up to date with their financial reports. Economist Professor William Barboating is warning that the Ghanaian economy is yet to fully recover from COVID-19. It's coming after the finance minister, Ken Furiata, announced a review of gross domestic product estimates and the 2022 macroeconomic target following the 5.4% growth rate recorded from last year. But speaking on PM Express Business Edition, Professor Bob Watting said the Russia-Ukraine is a major threat to the current gains. Russia uh, is a big player when it comes to global economy. And mm. if you look at Ukraine, I mean, they are uh, a source of raw materials, inputs mm. for mm. production of many things that we are, we are thinking about. So the direct or indirect effect uh, one way or the other. So we have to be cautious. And of course, even though we think that the COVID is, is, is almost over, we should not jubilate now. I think we should tread cautiously and be, not be too much jubilant, uh, but try to go uh, strategically. And I'm sure by a year or two, we can then say that, well, things are okay. Professor, the intents of policy response or at the individual consumption and spending level because I knew people who have moved all the way from London to Ghana because they couldn't stand the restrictions in London and they wanted psychologically some have gone through a lot of problems and some are saying that being even locked down or restrictions and all those things now they can even go out and all the rest isn't the spending even good for the economy or maybe you are talking about the policy response where government might go to sleep and say, listen, you have recovered, hurry, let me go and sleep. Well, it's a combination of, of, of factors. I think Ghana managed the COVID quite well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all have the evidence. So, uh, uh, and therefore, we, we cannot, we can say that, well, we've done well. And policy responses uh, was also quite good. And that is why you expect that some people from UK will come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. and we can still continue to do better. And I look at it from the expenditure side. I think that is where government should be very prudent in this expenditure mm. uh, measures. We still have to come up with a very good measure to sustain uh, the fiscal as we have. 
Ahead of the May Day celebration on May 1, the Union of Industry, Commerce and Finance Workers, UNICOF, wants the government to address the concerns of labor in order to get their full backing to grow the economy for the benefit of all. Organized labor is calling for salary increment in line with the current inflation rate, amongst others. UNICOF also wants organized labor to address the concerns of all workers ahead of the May Day celebration. John Amegashi is the General Secretary and has been speaking to Joy Business. It impacts negatively on the purchasing power and as a result, whatever our members receive as salary is eroded because as a country, we are into importation of almost everything. So that had impacted negatively on us. And um, it is one of the areas that we addressed yesterday in the forum that governments must uh, be able to meet all these challenging situations, engage organized labor for us to address them appropriately and timely so that at least uh, we all remain at peace to continue with our various jobs. What we proposing had to do with the general overhauling of our economy as far as uh, the incomes uh, paid to workers are concerned. And secondly, to also address the hardship that we fix. For instance, when you take the transport sector, once uh, uh, fuel prices are increased, you must know that it affects almost everything. So the, 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 the discussion was that what can the government do to alleviate the plight? What can the government do looking at um, um, foreign sanctions, uh, curtailing the uh, periodic and uh, um, uh, ever increasing prices that we are seeing at the pump prices? Some would want to attribute that to the war between Russia and Ukraine. But don't forget that we have had all these problems on hand before the war started yesterday. Let's go to the banking space now because Access Bank Ghana has reiterated the need to support women entrepreneurs to help grow the economy. The bank is pushing for innovative products that would allow business women access cheaper funds to enable them become competitive. The following report has more. Even though women play key roles in Ghana's economy, the lack of funding has made it difficult for them to expand their operations. This has resulted in many business managed by women collapsing. To address some of these challenges, Access Bank Ghana organized the Pan-African Women's Conference to empower women entrepreneurs. Speaking to Joy Business, the executive director in charge of retail and digital banking at Access Bank, Pearl Nkrumah, said Access Bank has increased its financial support to business women. So W Initiative is a community that was created by Access Bank Group to empower women, to be more deliberate with women concerns, to provide financial and non-financial support for women. We have done this over years from in the group. In Ghana, we've done this seven years now. We have it between a, a prof, the professional women, the MSMEs, and the women that need maternal assistance. We have done this across the facets of what concerns women. So in terms of financial literacy, in terms of financial assistance, and enabling women to bank from the comfort of their homes, and also supporting them with the tidbits that they need to promote their business. So it's a community to empower women, and it's a community to help, and it's a community to show that as a bank, we are concerned about what matters to women. Providing some details, the group head retail banker Matilda Asante Isiru stated that thousands of women have been directly supported by the bank to expand their businesses. First of all, I must say that the response has been overwhelming. So when we started W, let's say for every 10 new customers we acquired, about two of them were female. Now we have about 
four out of every ten and our goal is to grow it even more because we all know that the population in Ghana is more female than it is male. Uh, in terms of impact, I think we've touched over 400,000 entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs. We've given them capacity training, built their skills. We've also invested in their businesses by giving them loans. The Pan-African Women's Conference was organized under the theme Women Be Unstoppable, Break the Bias. Some of the participants included founder of the Chair Center Group, Ibukon Aosika, legal practitioner Joyce Bao Mukhtari, and CEO of African Women Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum, Irene Ochem. Expertise France, a subsidiary of French development agency AFD, has embarked has earmarked a 15.5 million euro fund for SME development in Ghana and the rest of Africa. The move is to use digital skills to upgrade the competitiveness of entrepreneurs across the country. Speaking at the signing ceremony with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, CEO of Expertise France, Jeremy Pelé, expressed confidence in the funds aiding the recovery of local businesses. We have built together with the European Union, with the Agence Française de Développement, with our friends from the Belgian cooperation in Abel, this program, it's a 15.5 million euro program covering uh, many countries actually in Africa and in the Caribbean. And uh, we are proud at Expertise France to implement uh, part of this program which will result in the development of skills and digital content among MSMEs and that will also imply, of course, a cooperation with actors such as the National Chambers of Commerce here in Ghana but also in Côte d'Ivoire, in Benin, in Togo and we will also work with the West African Federation of Chamber of Commerce. Um, so the, the launch of the, the training uh, today is, is very timely and it will yield uh, important results, I hope, for, for Ghana, for the private sector. Uh, we had many participants, we will certainly give uh, you more details on the participation today, but I understand that uh, the participation was strong with a strong representation of women that's good, more than 60%, if I'm correct. Um, we target to uh, expand this uh, activity and target maybe uh, eight times more uh, people and, and, and participants from all regions of Ghana. And um, companies that will participate to the training will also be able to enroll on digital platforms after the training enhance their online visibility, boost their credibility, and facilitate cross-border transactions. Meanwhile, the country director of AFD, Christophe Coté, has entreated businesses in Ghana to adopt digital tools for a swift recovery from COVID-19. AFD group in, uh, in, in Ghana is meant to support sustainable development and growth. And for France, and I'm, I think I can speak, speak in the name of the ambassador of France too, at the heart of sustainable development and growth, you have MSMEs. And the best tool, I think, to support MSMEs is to support institutions like yours, Chamber of Commerce, that's the more efficient. So now I think we have reached something um, the IFD group is composed of three entities. One is financing basically the improvement of business environment by supporting the public sector. That's what we have been doing in Ghana for more than 30 years now. We have been supporting agriculture, energy, urban development, and more generally, public governance. I hope it starts to bring some fruits, and I'm sure it is. Uh, the second entity is Proparco, who is financing directly the private sector, especially the banks, especially major uh, companies, enterprises, and currently uh, 
uh, new projects and new uh, financial agreements are being signed with different banks and some uh, Ghanaian companies too. Employers and business leaders are being urged to create a balance by adopting shared reward scheme to motivate employees as well as develop a penalty table to address unethical situations. According to Chief Executive of Automation GH Group, Kweku Esiama, incentivizing staff with a 13th or 14th salary encourages them to achieve their set target. There's more in the following report. Speaking at a workshop organized by the Stanford Seed Transformation Network, Ghana Chapter, Chief Executive of Automation Ghana Group, Kweku Asma, highlighted some key points he believes are fundamentals of a successful business. The shared reward scheme uh, enables employees to identify themselves and their position and the role they play in achieving the company's success. Now, if you know that you have a stick in set a certain output, you would definitely give it your all. If you know that you, you play a role in your small corner and at the end of the day the picture, the bigger picture is for the bosses to enjoy, you will definitely not give it your all. And the company's objective is to offer a service and the, the, the customer has an expectation. He has a certain requirement. And how do you get it? You need people to be committed to the timeline, to the quality and to the cost that has been agreed with the customer. And so it's very important that you have committed employees. On the issue of see something, say something. Obviously, if um, somebody is doing something contrary to the rules and regulations and you see it and you observe and uh, there's failure, at the end of the day, your company who pays you um, obviously will not uh, be successful. President of the Stanford Seed Transformation Network, Ghana Chapter, Linda Ya Ampa, indicated that her outfit seeks to empower businesses to succeed, but she believes companies cannot succeed if employees are not in sync. For members of the Seed Transformation Network, our objective is to help businesses transform. Now, you can't do this alone. We need a team to work with. There are basic principles that we need to work with to help businesses to grow, and that includes being ethical in all our dealings, um, thinking critically, thinking outside the box. So this is why we chose this theme for this first um, of a series that we are going to be rolling out. We need those to be able to help our businesses and the staff that we have, our management team, to be able to work in a certain way to be able to grow the businesses. The theme for the workshop was Influencing teams through ethics and critical thinking. That's how we end business here on Prime. But for more business stories, kindly log on to myjoyonline.com for a slash business. We leave you with business stories making headlines in the international front.
Hello, good evening and welcome to the uh, Prime Sports uh, with me, Uriah Kuwampo, for head coach of the Black Maidens, Babanuhu. is confident Ghana will reach the fourth round of the FIFA and the 17 World Cup qualifiers. He has been speaking ahead of Saturday's second leg, third round qualifier against Guinea at the Cape Coast Stadium. Our aim is to qualify and move to the next stage. If we are even getting a half goal, that will propel us to the next stage. It's welcome. If we are getting 100 goals, that will send us to the next stage. It's welcome. But our aim is not to play ultimately to get more goals, but to qualify. Whatever form that we are going to play to qualify to the next stage, I think that is what we have been working for. Every player, even at the top level, sometimes players can get those kind of begging chances and they will not be able to convert them. Uh, what is most important is to try and work, repeat it, work, repeat it, and then let them put it into practice. Then we pray that when it comes in my situation, they will be able to convert it. So I think on our return, that is what we have been doing. We have been working, practicing, putting it in different situations, and then making it real. So I'm very sure that once we get those kind of chances in the game, definitely we will be able to take them. Even though we beat them at their home, we will not find it difficult here, but we are going to play our maximum best to pick the three points. We are not scared of anything because with the training we have gone to, I give my team and the coach, I give him you know, that with the training he has given to us, we are going to beat everyone and qualify to the World Cup. Let's do some more stories where former Senegal captain El Haji Diof has called on football legends of African football uh, to follow in the steps of uh, Samoa Jan. The former Sunderland forward would release his book on Saturday. Uh, the project is aimed at capturing are the memoirs of the former Sunderland striker. El Haji Diof has been speaking to my colleague, Gary Alsmith. Meanwhile, president of the Ghana Football Association, Ket Okreku, uh, has commended the Ghana legend for the initiative and has promised to grace the occasion on Saturday. And, and somebody who is giving hope to a lot of people in this country. So, Asa, we'll be there to support you. I think everybody on the council will be there to support you. Um, for the sake of that event, I will hold an ESCO meeting the night before so that everybody will be, will be, will be present at the event. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, I, wish you, I wish you well. Mr. President, um, of course, um, on behalf of my, my team, um, I would like to thank you for acknowledging our uh, invite. You know, um, since um, you came at post, have you been so supportive from day one? Not even when you became a GFA president. After signing a pre-contract with Royal Antwerp, Dutch-born right-back Nathaniel Amwa is dreaming of playing for the junior teams of Ghana and eventually the Black Stars in the near future. Joy Sports Asari Bidiako caught up with him while he was on holidays in Ghana. For the youth sides of the Black Stars, I would really, uh, really like to join them. And of course, in the future, I would like to play for the, the Black Stars. But you were born in Holland, right? You were yeah, born in Holland. Yeah. You can play for the Orange. Why, why do you want to play for Ghana? Uh, because it's uh, a dream of my, uh, my grandmother and also a dream for me since I was uh, a small, small boy to, um, to once play for the, the Black Stars and, uh, and uh, represent my country. Nathaniel Amoa is dreaming of becoming a top right back in the not too distant future. Yeah, in the next five years, I hope to make uh, a lot of uh, development in my own career and, and in my, uh, my game. And I hope to uh, play for uh, a big club uh, one day in the, the couple of five years and uh, become one of uh, the best right backs in the world. I am uh, a box to box, so I like to go up, go up, go up, and I also can come back. And I like to give an assist and sometimes I even can make a goal. So I'm like a, a wing back, but I am also very good in defending. So By dint of hard work and discipline, Nathaniel Amwa will realize his biggest dream yet to feature for four-time African champions, the Black Stars. Well, let's look ahead uh, to what to expect this weekend. And we start off with the Ghana Premier League fixtures. Uh, with some tasty games to look forward to. Mm. It's match day 27, uh, just about seven more games to the end of the season. Asante Kotoko uh, would want to put an end to their bad form uh, when they travel to Sugakope to face Wafa. Uh, we do have Hart of Oak also trying to put pressure 
and get back into the top four when they host Dreams FC. Ashanti Gold are home against uh, Brecombe Chelsea, whilst on Monday, Adriana Stars face Mediama. Now joining us on the phone lines is Insure FM's Nuhu Adams, uh, who has been uh, following Kotoko quite closely this season. And we'll be talking to him about uh, what exactly is causing the slump in form for Asante Kotoko. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they looked like they were running away with the league after beating their rival Tata Folk. But things have turned around and it's been a downturn of form uh, for the Porcupine Warriors. Nuhu, it's a pleasure to have you uh, this evening. Uh, what would you summarize as uh, some of the issues that have faced uh, Prospernate in the last few weeks? Um, well, I, I would say um, it's a matter of player revolt because um, some of the players are not happy with um, the way the, the head coach, um, that's Dr. Prosper, um, handle certain issues within camp. So um, we all had the, the story of uh, Patrick Asma being suspended for the rest of the season. He's, so, he's not alone. There are other players who are also not um, happy about how things are going because they feel um, they are not getting equal treatment as players. Some of them feel there are players who will not even train the entire week. They will train only a day and, and will get there not to start um, ahead of them. So they, they, are, they are not happy. I think it's just about how um, the coach will, will be able to handle um, these issues. You know, Kotoko have been affected by um, player votes for, for quite some time now. Last season, um, Kotoko were leading the league table until when um, they had issues with um, the, the players and coaches and then um, the table turned around for Hansen to win the league. I think um, two seasons ago, we had similar situations in, in the team. So I think it is something... Um, the, the, the head coach and the technical team should, should take it as a setback. Um, then they will have to reorganize themselves, try to solve any issues within the camp, and then make sure they hit the ground running again. Because um, looking at the, 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 the point difference between them and the team United, um, the team still has a chance to, to, to win the league. Has to focus on you if Kotoko should drop points this weekend and has to focus win. It means they are closing in on Kotoko. So um, they, 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 they will get the Morabu star and uh, the, uh, the encouragement that they, they can still go ahead and win the league from Kotoko. So I think it's, uh, everything is on Kotoko. Um, they have to try as much as possible to make sure they, they won't lose that at the summit of the table. And uh, their disciplinary committee or their board or the leadership uh, took a stern decision uh, to suspend Patrick Asma uh, do you think that's the way to go? And do you suspect we might be seeing a little bit more of that getting to the end of the season? Yeah, uh, every team has the, 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 the code of conduct. So if you go contrary to the code of conduct of the club, um, there are punishments which the players are aware. And I think what Patrick Asma did was way, way um, a violation to the code of conduct. So he, he, he deserves to, to be punished. And the punishment is suspending him for the rest of the season. I think um, it is within the Kotoko team that whichever player misbehaves will, will, will be punished, and Patrick Asma is a, is a victim today. But I think they, they have to be strict on, on, on certain things in the, within the team. The code of conduct should work. Players shouldn't uh, misbehave. Players shouldn't think they, they can do whatever they want when they are in camp. I think um, it is the best way to go. Mm. And just before I let you go, Nuhu, uh, because of Patrick Asma's absence, uh, Kotoko would not, would not be with uh, natural left back uh, when they travel to Sugakope to face Wafa because there's no Imoru Ibrahim and now there's no Patrick Asma. But looking at the bigger picture, do you think Kotoko will put an end to their struggles uh, in Sugakope over the weekend? Well, um, so, so, Sugakope... Um, it's, it's one ground um, that has been very difficult for Kotoko. I think since Feyenoord uh, or Wafa returned to the league in 2015, they've not lost to Kotoko in Sugar Kope. They've won three and drawn three 
out of the six matches they played with Kotoko um, at Sugakope, even when they were final, that was the 2005-2006 season, Feyenoord were relegated, but they still beat Kotoko at home. So they, 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 they have that edge over Kotoko any time they play at home. But I think Kotoko is aware of, of the threat coming from Bechem United and has of hope. Um, even if they, they can't win, at least getting a draw will be much better because it is a team that is also struggling and fighting relegation. So they also want to put in everything to make sure they get at least all the three points. And so it's, it's going to be a difficult game. But I, I still expect Kotoko, even without um, a left back, they, they can still improvise, use Sheriff Mohamed, who has played at left back this season before. Um, and then they, they, they can get the results they want. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Nuhu Adams. And uh, let's continue on the bulletin and head to Europe as we look at the fixtures across uh, Europe's top five leagues uh, to look forward to this weekend. Uh, Strasbourg are currently hosting Paris Saint-Germain. And yeah, Strasbourg have just equalised 3-3 uh, uh, in that game. Paris Saint-Germain had a 3-1 goal lead, uh, but Strasbourg just got their equaliser in the 93rd minute. But there will be more games in uh, the French League. I remember Paris Saint-Germain are still champions-elect and this result wouldn't change much. Uh, but Marseille uh, would be hosting Lyon and that should be the fixture of the round as Monaco also hosts Angers. In La Liga, uh, it was 1-1 between Sevilla and Cadiz. Uh, that match is still ongoing. It's still 1-1 uh, between the two sides. Uh, but Real Madrid could all become could all but become uh, La Liga champions-elect, uh, or they just need us a point against Espanyol. Uh, Barcelona, on the other hand, would be facing Mallorca at home as they look to also put an end to a bad run of form at the Camp Nou. In the English Premier League, it's Eli Kekor, Fort Jürgen Klopp's Liverpool, who travelled to St James Park uh, to face Newcastle United to try and keep the pressure on Pep Guardiola's Man City, who would also be at Ellen Road later on in the day to face Leeds United. On Sunday, Chelsea travelled to face their former coaches, uh, Frank Lampard, uh, Everton, and then Tottenham Hotspur will be at home against Leicester City. Arsenal would also look to solidify uh, their fourth spot as they travelled to the London Stadium to play West Ham United. Manchester United returned to action on Monday when they host Brentford. In the German Bundesliga, uh, Borussia Dortmund would be at home against uh, VfL Bochum. Champions elect Bayern Munich also travelled to face Mainz 05 as Eintracht Frankfurt, who are in the semi finals of the Europa League, play on Monday against Bayer Leverkusen, with Borussia Mönchengladbach facing Red Bull Leipzig. Before we go, let's talk tennis, where in its efforts in developing the sport at tertiary school level, a Coupon-based La Constance Tennis Club has donated tennis gears to Dr. Hila Liman Hall of the University of Ghana. We have more for you in the following report. The items include 30 sets of tennis rackets, 30 pair of sneakers, 20 tennis covers, and over 1,000 tennis balls. The items were donated by Dr. Ania Pamboafo, founder of La Constance Tennis Club. He explains the rationale behind the donation. As the saying goes, the best part of every man's life is what you give back to society. And so when you have the ability to do things for society, that is what should drive you. Like I said, I happen to have a good network of institutions in the US that donate a whole lot of tennis equipment for me because of the La Constance Tennis Center that we established. And so with the outflow of some of the things, and when I was contacted by Dr. Owusu, I felt it necessary to extend that kind of activity to the hall so that students would have the opportunity to be able to use tennis for whatever reason that needs to be useful. I think this gesture cannot be translated into money. And I'll probably it is the use and what comes out of it that is more significant the amount than the amount of money involved. But I also encourage students to take this up as an opportunity 
because tenant is something that you can live with rest of your life. Senior tutor of the Hila Liman Hall, Dr. Kwajo Ousuae, is grateful to La Constance Tennis Club for their kind gesture. It's going to benefit about 2,000 um, students in the hall. Yes, sometimes during uh, breaks or recreation, we had very little to do. I remember I saw um, students playing football on the tennis court and I felt it was unacceptable. I stopped them. And so I'm happy that at least we have been able to bring um, tennis uh, to the doorstep of Hila Liman Hall. And I, I, I want to believe that students will actually embrace um, the, 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 the spirit of playing tennis in the hall. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, the Prime Sports here with me, Ray Kuwampo. For you can get some more sports stories on my Joe Online for SLA Sports, or you can check our social media handles at JoySportsGH on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a fantastic weekend.